Thank you for the opportunity to testify this morning. LDF is the nation's oldest civil and human rights law organization. LDF was founded in 1940 by Thurgood Marshall, and in the 80 years since its inception, it has used legal advocacy strategies to promote the full, equal, and active citizenship of black Americans. That includes litigating the seminal case of Brown versus Board of Education and Newman versus Piggy Park Enterprises, which is important for our purposes here today because it upheld Title II of the Civil Rights Act of 1964's prohibition on racial discrimination in public accommodations. For as long as we have been in this country, black people have faced discrimination that impedes our mobility in public spaces and discrimination in various spheres because of our hair. Indeed, the civil rights movement that ended legal apartheid in the United States was anchored in acts of resistance related to transportation, including the bravery of women like Rosa Parks and children like Claudette Colvin. The Civil Rights Act of 1964 was built on the foundation that Congress can take action to prohibit racial discrimination that impedes travel and thereby impedes interstate commerce. Black women's hair has also never ceased to be policed. From forcible head coverings in the antebellum South to the present day denial of employment and other rights based on our hair texture and treatment. In light of this history, we at LDF are deeply troubled that TSA's full body scanners disproportionately single out black women for additional and burdensome security procedures, including invasive and humiliating hair pat downs. This systematic infringement on the mobility of black women by a government agency must be corrected, and we are heartened that this committee is taking up the charge. Roughly 8% of the U.S. adult population of flyers is black, 17% is Latinx, and 6% is Asian. However, reports suggest that countless black travelers have experienced heightened suspicion and profiling as a result of TSA technology that singles out black people in airports, particularly black women, simply because the technology is unable to distinguish contraband from natural black hair. The false positives produced by TSA's full body scanners exemplify the impact of purportedly race neutral technology that nonetheless perpetuates racial profiling. Whether they are high profile celebrities, business travelers, or general commuters, for black women, TSA scanners are one more assault in a constant barrage of risk assessments to which they are subjected on a daily basis and which reflect deep rooted biases and historical associations between race and dangerousness. Moreover, racial discrimination is a proven threat to our national security. Yet TSA has not justified that its highly criticized practice of violative hair pat downs improves security. To the contrary, security experts have called into question whether these additional screenings are an effective use of TSA personnel's time and resources. Most disturbing, perhaps, is that top TSA officials do not seem to recognize that a system that disproportionately singles out black women is discriminatory. We know that technology is susceptible to biases of the humans who create it. This means that technology that uses white phenotype as a default can easily produce biased outcomes against people of color. And this issue is not new. Not only did this committee hold a hearing on these issues a little over a year ago, TSA has been aware of discriminatory and biased security practices for years. In 2015, it entered a settlement agreement over the very issue of racially profiling black hair. To be very clear, we recognize and respect TSA's important security functions at our nation's airports. However, I want to stress that we can maintain security in our nation's airports while maintaining the human dignity of our nation's travelers. We can pursue new technology and not compromise civil and human rights. In fact, these goals can not only coexist, by law, they must. In closing, we acknowledge TSA's important charge to ensure safe travel while meeting its obligation to treat all passengers with dignity. We also appreciate the attention this committee has paid to this important issue, and thank you for your consideration and for the opportunity to testify today.